Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. I'm back in the garden this week. The weather is looking a lot better. Last week it was just rain every single day and I did wonder whether that would be the end to the flowers because they were starting to get bashed about a bit in the wind and the rain was really making some of the flower petals really soggy and unusable. But it has brightened up today, it's warmer again and I'm hopeful that actually we might be able to keep the flowers going for a bit longer. So we're gonna have a little look today and see how I can do that. And also I'm going to be having a look at the dahlias because the dahlias are hanging on in there um, but it won't be long before the frosts come along and it, they just go overnight um, when the frosts come. So I'm going to be having a look at labelling dahlias today. Behind me here in the border it's starting to look a little bit tired now. The colour from most of the flowers has gone but there are still some lovely cosmos in there and at the moment we're going to go and have a look at them and see if we can get them to keep on flowering. A few different jobs so come along with me and we'll have a look and see what is happening in the garden. Apologies if you can't hear me quite as well today. I normally wear a little microphone um, and somehow I have mislaid that. So hopefully you can hear me all right, but do let me know in the comment section if you can't and hopefully I will find that again for next week's video. So over here you can see some lovely cosmos still flowering. That one's a beauty just there, the lovely pink one. And beside it you can see here that that's a cosmos that has finished. So what we want to do to keep our flowers going is to cut back any of those stems that have finished flowers on them and that will hopefully promote new flower stems being produced. And at this time of year you don't know whether any more are going to get produced because of the weather but it's definitely worth a try because if we do get a warm spell in October, which can happen, then you will get lots more flowers. So let's get our snips and cut some of these old flowering stems back. So you've got a few choices here depending on what you want to do. You can just snip off the flower head here and you can see other buds coming round about it so those were all flower or you can cut further back in the plant to try and promote longer stems being produced if you're wanting to cut some from the for the house. Now this time of year these ones are just to look pretty in the border so I may well just de-head to the bottom of that stem that we can see there and allow the buds on either side to flower. This Cosmos Santos is the same. There's some really pretty light yellow flowers in bloom, but also there are some spent blooms on the stems there that you can see as well. So we want to trim all those back so that we can keep on promoting flowering for as long as possible. There's some lovely Cosmos in the beds, but again, it's going through and just checking to see if there is anything that needs cut back to promote more flowering stems coming. These ones have been really nice this year. So this is Cosmos Purity here and behind it we've got Cosmos Daydream. They are really nice to grow. Cosmos will last up to the first frost as well but as soon as they come then that will be the Cosmos like the dahlias finished as well. You can see here that the wind has just snapped that branch over that wasn't caught in the netting to hold it up. So things like that you can just chop back and another flowering stem will grow out of it. So let's just do that just now and tidy that plant up. I can get my snips. We'll just cut there, remove that and you can see there that we've left just a little bit of shoot there above the side branches and that'll promote new growth into new flowering shoots if the weather allows. So the cosmos has grown fantastically well this year and you can see here that this one has got lots of lovely new buds coming on it but you can also see that it's really really tall. I'm holding up the camera now above my head and um, because the cosmos is way taller than I am and that just shows really that you do need some really good support in the garden need to put that horizontal netting on early if you're growing lots of cosmos early in the season and um, so it can grow up through it with support or if you're just growing a few make sure you've got canes and twine and keep tying them in as the season goes on because um, at this stage we do get some blustery windy weather in October and it would just take one overnight storm to bring all this cosmos down and with all the buds that are there that would be a shame because I think we can get a good few weeks more of flowers out of them. 
The scabies have been amazing this year and I've been trying really hard to keep deheading them and cutting them back and that promotes more flowering stems. So I'm just going to go through that again today and see if there's any more that I need to cut out. But you can see here that there's lots and lots of new buds ready to come. So we've still got lots of flowers yet from these. So here's some scabious here. So this one has finished flowering. So that's one that needs to have its stem followed back down here and then snipped off to encourage more flowers to come. And then that stem there can go in the compost. And from the same plant, you can see here that we've removed the old flowering stem and we've got a new one just coming through. The asters in the garden are the stars of the show at this time of year. I use so many asters for cutting and arrangements. They're fantastic, really good filler flowers. And you can see this bee's enjoying this aster here in the garden. The Rebecca has been brilliant this year as well. Gorgeous yellow flowers. So that's a really good one to grow for some autumn color next year if you haven't tried it before. Sedum's a great thing to have in your garden at this time of year because it looks absolutely amazing and it is quite good at withstanding the weather as well and the bees absolutely love it. The Helichrysum this year have been the best Helichrysum I've ever had in the flower patch and they've kept on flowering and the secret to this I think is that I have cut them back this year. I've been really careful to do that and I've got more blooms because of it. I think in the past I've let the Helichrysum flower and thought that that was it whereas this year as soon as it's flowered I have cut it back and I've got new blooms at this time of year in October. They're fantastic flowers, really fantastic for drying as well. And you can see the new buds coming here from having chopped back earlier after a first flush of flowers earlier in the season. So lots of new buds coming. So it's definitely worthwhile doing cutting back after your first flush of flowers. These helichrysum are just gorgeous and a lot of these are going in my arrangements this week. So my garden gate stall is still open at this time of year. Sometimes it finishes in September if we've had an early frost, but this year we haven't had one yet. So we've got lots of lovely flowers still on it. Hopefully we'll get another couple of weeks of flowers yet. At this time of year, the dahlia patch is still flowering well. It has slowed down a little bit, so there's not as many blooms as before, but what is flowering is really nice. But at this time of year, a frost can come along at any time, and it only takes one frost for your dahlia patch to just disappear overnight. So you can go to bed one night with your dahlias blooming, looking lovely, and then you can wake up the next morning and the whole bed just looks like blackened stems and drooped mushy flower heads. When it gets to that stage, you no longer know which dahlia is which. If you didn't manage to label them all up or you had the odd one in June where you didn't know what it was from the previous year, you just planted the tuber and were hoping for the best for it coming back, then now is an ideal time to label up your dahlias while you can still see them flowering and know which is which. So today I have got with me my plant labels and I've got my permanent marker pen and I'm just gonna go down the dahlia bed and see if there's any that I missed. I know that all the new ones I do have plant labels round, but I did have some in a box last year that were just random tubers that I replanted and I wasn't sure what was going to come up. So those are the ones that I need to identify and put in a plant label while I can see their flowers. So which dahlias have flowered best for me this season? I would say it's not been my best season for dahlias this year. I don't know whether that has been the weather, um, but the ones that have done really well have been Dark Spirit, which is a beautiful burgundy one if you want to try that. Um, we've got Stolz von Berlin, which is a lovely pink dahlia, and I didn't have enough pink blooms last year, so that was a new one for me, and it's been really good this year. Really like Wine Eye Jill too, and one of my top favorites for its beautiful color is Bluebird. I really love that one. So those are a few to try next year if you like. 
The ones that I have the most problems with are the white ones. They are absolutely beautiful, stunning dahlias. So I've got things like Water Lily White, I've got Wizard of Oz, which is a very pale pink, um, creamy one. But the thrips have been a real problem on those this year. So even though the blooms look beautiful up close, they do have thrip damage, which means I haven't been able to use them as much in my arrangements as I would like. So I need to come up with a trick to handle the thrips next year. So if you've got any really good ideas on that one, that would be great to hear from you. So let's go and see if we can find any dahlias in the flower patch that don't have a name to them at the moment and pop a plant label in with them. Hopefully we'll get another couple of weeks out of them but last year they were all gone by now. I lost the dahlia bed overnight on the 26th of September last year so that was really early. It's nice to see them still going now that we're into October. So this is the Stolls von Berlin that I was talking about. I really like it because it's a nice pale pink to go in bouquets. So far so good, that's one there um, that has a label on it. Going down the bed, that one does too. And this wine eyed Jill one has. This one here is Dark Spirit and I absolutely love this, it's a fantastic colour. Really nice to use in bouquets and a little bit different. This dark spirit dahlia has a label, so it's looking quite good. I think the dahlia bed is pretty much labelled. I haven't found any so far that need labelling. This one here is called Petra's Wedding. It's a nice white dahlia. So there's still some new dahlias opening out, even though we're this late on in the season. And this one's labelled up as well, Karma Naomi, so we're okay there. Here's Wizard of Oz, which is really pretty. But again, this is the ones that I've had problems with with the thrip damage this year. This variety here is called Water Lily White and is a really beautiful white one. I've been able to use these in some DIY wedding buckets that have gone out this year. So I've been up and down the dahlia beds now having a look at whether or not I did label them up well in June and actually this year I'd done a better job than I thought I had so there wasn't any there that I hadn't labelled but I'm going to go and check out the ones in the greenhouse in the pots now because I have a feeling they might have come out of that box of dahlias that weren't labelled when I potted them up earlier this year. So let's go and have a look in there. So I'm just having a look at my dahlias in the greenhouse now that I planted up into pots this year and this one sure enough doesn't have a label on it and I'm pretty sure that's dark spirit by having a look at it so I'm just going to go and write a label up for that. So that's now got a new label in there. It has been really worthwhile um, planting the dahlias up in some containers to pull into the greenhouse at this time of year when the weather starts to change. I've had a fair few dahlia flowers that I've used for arrangements out of these. So I certainly wouldn't do all of my planting up in pots. I would definitely always keep my dahlia beds, but just to have one or two just to keep in here for those later arrangements has definitely been a good idea and I'll do it again next year. So my top tips for this week would be to go around your flower beds and your flower patches and de-head as much as you can so that you can keep those flowers going for longer. So any flowering stems that have finished and haven't gone to seed yet, snip off those finished stems and you'll hopefully get some nice new flowers. And my other tip would be to go around your dahlias and make sure that they're all labelled up before those first frosts so that when you come to store them they all have a label with them and then next year when you get them out you know which is which. The plan for next week is to come back and have a look at the seedlings that we sowed in late August and early September, see if they need potting on again and how they're getting on in the greenhouse. And also we're going to have a look at the sweet pea seeds that we sowed a week or two ago, see if they've germinated and if they need potting on yet as well. And in the weeks after that we've got lots still to do, we've got lots of clearing up in the garden, we've got to lift those dahlias and get them stored for the winter. And I'll have a look at some of my favourite tools and my favourite books with you as well.